What's going on everybody? It's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at something that has been a question for a lot of people, including myself. Is my Pleco pure? Meaning, like when I go buy an L236, what am I really getting? Is it a pure L236? Can it breed with my L333? What is a species? What is a subspecies? What is a family? What is a genre? What is all these scientific jargons? And what does this all this mean? And and if I keep all one L number with another L number, can they cross? Can they make babies? And are those babies going to be worth something or worthless? These are a lot of questions a lot of you guys have. And a lot of times on the Playco groups that I, groups that I'm a member of, these questions come up quite a bit. And uh, we often get into these conversations. A lot of the people that are like the members on it that are like prominent and that do have quite an extensive knowledge on the topic get into heated debates and lots of conversations on this and we you know lots of back and forth a lot of information valuable information so I just want to make a quick video about uh, the definitions the scientific definitions of what a species is and then then give you guys my personal view on if you should mix different collection points if if it is actually even possible if it is something that should be done if it's the other babies viable all these questions are going to be answered so we're going to spend some time looking at this like i said earlier this is not an uh, entertainment channel this is an educational channel so we're going to look at a lot of science stuff in this channel and uh, we're going to find out more information about people uh, from people that are actually doing research that have been in the hobby for a long time other science people that have done papers and stuff there's a paper done on Placo gut bacteria which I'm gonna be like sharing with you guys so stay tuned for that if you haven't subscribed subscribe down below hit that notification icon and stay tuned because all this information is coming your way and uh, what we're trying to do is learn together and go on this journey on learning about how we can do a good job at keeping these animals happy and healthy in our care now in today's video we're going to look at what a species is okay what is a species on google it says on in biology this is the definition a group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding the species is the principal natural taxonomical unit ranking below a genus and den denoted by a Latin binomial, for example, Homo sapien. So, Homo is the genus, and sapien is the species, which is what we are, human beings. Now, um, there's a really good video actually I found online by this uh, young ichthyo ichthyobiologist, and uh, her channel is called Freshwater Ichthyology. I'll put a link to it down below and uh, she has done a lot of the preliminary work so I highly recommend you check that video out because that's going to explain the general grouping or the family or the order and uh, the super family and uh, the subfamilies the all these different placos belong to and she categorizes them there's over a thousand and two I believe um, and thank you so much if you're watching this for correcting me on Facebook because I was under the impression that we only had 600 odd uh, described species and uh, now we have over a thousand plus so there's a lot of science being done on this and uh, check out her video I'll put the link down below so you get a better understanding of the broader family that these animals belong to now for our purpose of our video we're gonna look at hypencestrus which is what most of you guys are interested in which is why you guys are here for your zebra placos, your L333s, your king tigers, your L66 king tigers, your L199 zebras, like all these different types, the mega clown placos, all your different zebra placos that you like keeping, that are, or, or hypancestrous types you like keeping, is why you guys are here. So we're going to look at hypancestrous as a family um, or a genus, and uh, we're going to look at all these different things that uh, hypancestrous belongs to. Now on uh, freshwater theology's video she goes into talking about the super family the, the the tribe and the family 
uh, the different groupings, the, the six different family groups of uh, Plecos, and, uh, and fully explains that. Now, for our purposes, Hypancestris, which is what we're keeping, uh, belongs to the genus Hypancestris. That's why they're called the Hypancestris. Now, can all Hypancestris interbreed with each other? Richard Dawkins has a really good video about this um, on his uh, website, actually. So, I'm going to put Richard Dawkins' website link down below, so you can check out this video. Richard Dawkins, he's one of my personal heroes. He's an entomologist and an evolutionary biologist, and he has written quite a bit of uh, papers and research on this topic and uh, there's a really good short video, it's about three minutes long and I'll put the link to that down below as well so I'd recommend you check that out and uh, he talks about what a species is in that three minute video and the first question he asks is is every offspring a new species? now a good answer to that is if you look at these Photodomas king tigers, they're siblings, there's nine of them and they all look completely different from each other, they all have different markings if I were to go collect them in the wild, I'll give, give each one of them a different L number based on their markings and how they look. So, are they hybrids? Are they mixed with something? Are they something else? What is, what is up with that, right? Now, they come from ugly looking regular Hype Ancestors parents that the breeder bought as King Tiger Placos. They were just a Photodemos variation, which is a subspecies or a, a different collection point. So, um, and that's the only difference from them to your regular King Tiger Placos. And uh, when they breed with each other, all their babies are also going to be the same thing as the parents. Now, um, are they different from your L333 King Tiger Placos in a sense? If I were to take L333 and put it in this tank, or L236 Super White and put it in this tank, could those two fish breed? Chances are most likely yes, and, and they are going to produce viable babies because they are considered to be the same species more or less and uh, the L236 is uh, essentially a, a lion bred variation of what a king tiger is and different hybrids of them uh, and even the word hybrid doesn't even apply in this scenario because Richard Dawkins explains this quite el elaborately in his 3 minute video and uh, basically what he says is uh, is every new baby a new species? No, but by if you were to take a population of animals, let's say Hype Ancestris uh, Plecos, uh, a genus or a species of Hype Plec, you know, the, the main Hype Ancestris, let's say the original fish or whatever, and they were, let's say, split by some natural occurrence, like they were living in two separate rivers. Over time, they begin to evolve independently. Once they're separated from each other, through whatever barrier or physical scenario that they are separated by, either they're on different islands, they're on different rivers, they're different parts of the river, whatever it might be. They start, the, the, the new offspring are now independently evolving from each other. The, the, the independent populations are now beginning to evolve by themselves into a, it's a starting of a new species. But they're in by no means our new species yet. They are still the same species. They're just now slowly beginning to diverge into brand new species. Eventually, after a very, 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 very long time, if they were to stay separated and a long time, evolutionary time has passed and they have now gone through several hundred generations and they have now become so different that their genes are no longer compatible with each other where they cannot come together and reproduce viable children or offspring is when they are no, now a different species. For example, if you were to take a mule uh, and, and a, like, a mule is created by taking a horse and a donkey and crossing them. Now a mule is a perfectly functioning animal. It, it lives completely healthy, long life, but a mule is the end of his line because it cannot procreate the next generation. It, a mule cannot cross back to a horse or to a donkey or to another mule and create a viable offspring. So a mule is the end of that um, pairing and that is how we know for a fact that a horse 
and a donkey is two separate species okay now the same thing applies with the lion and a tiger where the offspring a, a tigon or a liger is a perfectly healthy and, and functioning organism it can run and do everything else it eats lives completely fine but it cannot produce any offspring of its own with either of the parent species or within another one of its own kind let's say the new kind that it is so that th that shows us by definition and and 100 percent proof that a lion and a tiger are two separate species which is why a uh, dog is no different from a wolf because it, or, or even a, a, a coyote because you can have coyote wolf hybrids that are completely functional you can have dog wolf hybrids dog coyote hybrids uh, this is why we believe the grizzly bear and the, and the polar bear are the same species or they're subspecies now that's another new thing uh, that you want to kind of consider but when a population is so far isolated for a long period of time they can become a subspecies uh, a, a polar bear and a grizzly bear is a great example of this I will put diagrams to, to some of these down below I have some of it written out I'm, I'm just trying to give this information in a concise manner but uh, essentially a polar bear and a grizzly bear are subspecies that can interbreed and produce uh, a growler uh, so a grizzly polar bear hybrid and uh, they exist in nature and uh, they're more common now because of global warming and the populations are now coming into more contact with each other and those uh, hybrid uh, offspring are completely viable and can reproduce with either a polar bear or a grizzly and create a viable offspring now uh, so therefore a polar bear and the grizzly bear are now considered subspecies not different species same thing can apply for some of your L numbers too so you got to be careful in terms of uh, keeping these guys uh, the, the lines as the, in different tanks, this is now coming into the point where I'm going to give you my personal opinion on this is that scientifically speaking it's nothing wrong to to take any of the L numbered fish that can reproduce with another L numbered fish and cross them and, and produce viable babies and 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 uh, and, and, and to, 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 to create new offspring there's nothing wrong with that and although we in North America and Europe uh, kind of look down on it it is completely natural and it's completely fine to do that now if you feel otherwise comment below I don't agree with it either but scientifically speaking it is possible because it is naturally that's what it is now like the grizzly bear and the polar bear these animals could be subspecies so they are definitely isolated for a reason uh, geographically like naturally so what we want to do is to try to keep them in different tanks and different in different um, environments so that they, they do not hybridize in, in, in our tanks or do not cross between the different populations so we do not know which population an animal might have come from now having said that if you are buying a King Tiger Pleco from a pet store or from most breeders that do not have like a, a, a nomenclature attached to it like the first generation F1 or F2 or a collection location or a collection point uh, they are the offspring of these like several generations down or line bred from these or whatever you're definitely getting uh, something that has been mixed with several different types or collection points at least in most cases I'm not saying that's the case with every single one of the fish you're gonna get but in most cases and there's nothing wrong with those fish but uh, for the purpose of keeping these lines as pure as possible for preservation conservation purposes I would highly recommend if you were to get let's say 10 fish from a, a collector or an importer that comes from a specific collection point to keep those fish separate from your tank bread varieties just to keep the, the genes purer so that uh, if at some point scientists do want to study these animals and just to, to, to figure out if these are subspecies of the main grouping or if they are a different species of their own or anything like that we have uh, an intact population that we can uh, give uh, genetic material from um, that is in captivity that we don't have to go collecting uh, from nature so that's something that uh, is, is good so 
Uh, I fully believe we should be keeping the animals, uh, the lines separate or the, the different collection points separate, the different L numbers separate. I don't think you should be putting several L numbers in the same tank for many different reasons, hybridization being one of them. And it's not the main reason why I don't think it's a good idea. It, mo mostly for me, it's because there is no control when you have several different L numbers, especially if they are not compatible with each other. Like for example, if you're keeping a high ancestress and uh, another species that is not compatible with the high ancestress, then you're definitely getting into trouble at that point because they're all going to want to eat the same food that you're putting in the tank. And, and even a, uh, a super red and a high ancestress, you're running into trouble because the super red cannot handle the higher fat content or the protein content your high ancestors might be able to handle. So that's another thing we're going to talk about in the coming video, which is uh, placo gut bacteria. Stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below and let me know. I know this is going to like leave a lot of questions and a lot of uh, feedback as well. I would love to hear your opinions and uh, also check out Freshwater Ichthyology's channel and. Uh, give her a subscription because there's a lot of valuable information there. I just found that channel recently and I'm just going through it and I'm finding lots of gems in there and I'm really impressed with uh, the information. So if she is watching, if you are watching uh, Freshwater Theology, thank you so much for making your video that you just recently put out and uh, it was really helpful and uh, everybody check out Richard Dawkins video down below that will explain what a species is in very simple terms and also if you have any other questions comment below and I'll make a part two to this and we can get more into this. So thank you so much as always. I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. God bless.